Abraham rekuta lapa katesa katosh ikanta katora ba 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 ezukoto ripa kanda la bosa kaya ezakanto lopra kanda makasa kate ekasanto repa kanda la bosa kata repa kando ya makedo makunda kate ezakato repa kate ikatos ikata kata kata kato repa kanda la brakata I scatter every element. I scatter every devil trying to torment your children, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Makusa kanda la prakato. Ekasakato. Father, we bless your name. All things are possible with you. And all things are possible to they that believe. Tonight it is our belief that our God, you have answered us by fire, by thunder, in the name of Jesus. If you are a believer, shout a louder and a victorious amen. If you are part and parcel of that prayer, can I hear a victorious amen? If that was your prayer, can I hear a winning amen? If that one was your prayer, can I hear a winning amen? Has put something in them. And the devil will always find ways and means on how he can try and frustrate that which the Lord has deposited in you. And I was asking the Lord, I said, God, but why is it that every time you are about to move me into another dimension, it's every time there is something that will pull me down. There is something that will push my spirit down. And the Lord said to me, he said, do not give up. You know, there are certain times and moments when I'm going to just allow you to go through certain things, not because I've neglected you, not because I have abandoned you, but because I'm so closer to you, beyond that which you think or imagine. I'm close than what you think or imagine. People can talk nonsense about you. People can call you names. People can describe you how much they want to describe you. But that's not how God calls you. Listen. We are in the world where we're dealing with human beings who can never appreciate. Oh, yeah, Katora Mandala Bosaya. Listen. If I, a human being like me, even if I go and buy the whole universe, I come and place it in your hands. The fact that I'm a human being and the fact that you're also a human being, you can never appreciate me. So we are living in the world. We are living in the society where people just want to raise tension over nothing. Where people can't just appreciate on the little things that the Lord is doing for them. And now it has come to a point where now in the house of the Lord, people can't praise and worship God in reality anymore. People can't thank God in reality anymore because they think God is not there. And they think that maybe the people that are surrounding, they keep on frustrating them. Listen to me, shake your neighbor, say neighbor, I'm not here to discourage you. Tell them I'm not here to discourage you. I'm here to build you. I'm here to encourage you and tell them, say, neighbor, the word of the Lord says that iron sharpens iron. Listen to me. Hey. Listen. You can't be coming in the house of the Lord. Let me tell you the truth. You can't be coming in the house of the Lord while your heads are heavy. You can't receive nothing from the Lord. You can't come here and be in pretense. You pretend all is well when things are not well. You hear me? Now listen. There is something that God wants to do in your life. Oh, yakato ramanda rabosai. There is something big that God wants to work out in your life tonight. There is something great that God wants to work out tonight. Listen, I am sick and tired of people who want to encourage me in my spirit, discourage me in my faith. 
If you are along my, listen, if you don't give me way, I'll crush you. And if I crush you, you will scatter. We don't. Listen. When you come in the presence of the Lord like this, it's a moment of celebration. It's a moment where you know that my maker, my Messiah is here to break me down. He's here to rebuild me. He's here to mold me. He's here to recreate me and bring out something big in me. Exactly the same way he wants me to function. Hmm? My God. Listen. God wants to change people's lives. But if people will keep on listening to barking dogs. Listen. God wants to bless you. It is the desire and the plan of God for him to bless you. You know, when you're entering into somebody's territory or somebody's yard and that particular person they keep dogs they, those dogs they don't know you right in the first place they don't know you you are a stranger to them now the moment they see a stranger the dogs they begin to bark they bark because it's an alert to say a stranger is coming in the vicinity in other words you are not on the same level with them When you enter in this place, guess what will happen? The dogs will begin to bark. And if you are not focused, you get disturbed. You concentrate on the barking dogs and forget that you need to go and enter into a certain place. I know you didn't hear me. There are certain people that the devil or he will deliberately place in your life just to disturb your focus. Just to disturb your concentration. Hey. Any devil tonight. I said any devil. I said any Satan. I said any disturbing barking dog. Out of your system and out of your life. Mighty name of listen. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. God was telling me, He said it's because you're surrounded by wrong people. Huh? Your environment matters whether God can place with in a few minutes that I'll be ministered. If you hate me, just come to me and say, I hate you. Don't say, I love you, and yet you are lying. My God will punish you by fire. Listen, you don't come to me and pretend, my pastor, you say, I love you. If you, in reality, your heart says, I hate you. You understand what I mean? I don't like people who pretend. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. That's what the word of God says. And the Bible says, he hates lukewarm people. God says, I'll vomit you. So if you want to be hot, be hot. If you want to be cold, be cold. You can't be double. Hey, are you an amphibian? Who lives both in water and on the dry land? <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody tonight? Tonight I am angry at that devil that brings you down. Tonight, I am very angry at that Satan that tries to discourage your spirit. Enough is enough. We have prayed, we have laid our hands. Prophet has done everything possible. And your life is not changing just because of a simple person who is busy discouraging your faith. Don't you think that's whatsoever? Ha! You 
move from one prophet to the other, from one church to the other. You will finish all the churches in South Africa. You even cross borders, you go wherever. But nothing will change if your spirit is discouraged. It's my encouragement tonight that the Lord must lift up your spirit. And I pray that tonight the Lord will beautify your life. And it's my prayer that tonight the Lord will do something new in your life. And it's my prayer that you'll take away that. Thank you, Jesus. Just speak in tongues if you can. Makarabosa. Makuta la prakanda la bosa. Leprokondo lo prakata. Makata la prakanda la prakadosh. Makura bosa ya manda la prakadosh. Esa kata la prakata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My beautifier, you've taken away the shame, taken away the pain. You made my life so beautiful. My beautifier, you've taken away the shame, taken away the pain. You made me just like you, my beautiful. Taking away the shame, taking away the pain. You made my life so beautiful, my beautiful. You've taken away the shame, taken away the pain. You made me just like you. Tonight, he's going to make you the same way he is tonight. If only you can set your surrounding and shake things around you. He's going to you sit together. He's going to sit you together with him in the heavenly places in the name of Jesus. Have your seats if you can. Take it away, they shame. You made my life so beautiful, my beautiful. You're taking away the shame. You're taking away the pain. Came. Now can we do this? And it'll be your hair, but one. Oh wow! Hallelujah! Amen. Let's continue verse twelve. I think I'm getting interested in that. Now, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. When he said to Abraham, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will save them and they will afflict them for hundred years. And also the nation whom they save, I will judge. Afterwards, they shall come out with great possessions now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between the pieces. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham saying, Unto, unto your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river and the river Euphrates and Canaanites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephraim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gishashites and the Jebusites. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' Amen. name. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. I hope you got that story right. Do you have your Bible with you? If you didn't get it right, go back at home and study your Bible and the Lord will reveal great things to you. Amen. Amen. When we come in the house of the Lord, it's not the only place where we can read the word of God. Have your personal time to study the word of God. Amen. 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 I said amen. Amen. I said amen. Amen. Somebody who was a son of Raboshanga. Raboshanga. Huh? My same name is Raboshaka. Okay, do you know somebody? Wait. Do you know somebody who has a phone number like 081? <laughs> wait. I'm still seeing it the way I'm seeing it. 08148 is it 482 and then I'm seeing 7454 it's it's my number mama professor now listen listen 81 something something 7484 <laughs> 5827454 mama huh? 5827454 uh, 7454. Yes, Mama. Is 081 582 582. Yes, Mama. And then 7454. 54 at the end. Amen. <laughs> and I saw something like Rabba, Rabosha, Rabosha, Rabosha. It's my same name, Mama. Yeah. So the Lord is interested about this person. Can I go deep? Go deeper, Mama. Go or deeper. Can we do this thing later? Girl, go deeper, Mama. You know, I don't prophesy. When it comes, it comes by grace. Small, small. In the shoes of the prophet of this house. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's the only prophet I know that is my personal prophet. Oh, yes. And it's the only grace that works over my life. Oh, yes. If you are hurt, you are tired with his anointing, go and hang on a tomato tree. It's working for me. Yeah, yeah, it just worked. Now it showed me something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the Lord says there's good news coming to your household. I receive. Because there's a dilemma in the area of your relationship. <laughs> That's true, Mama. Number one, there's a dilemma in the area of your relationship. That's true. Number two, the Lord is going to help you to make more than what you have ever made at your company. I receive, I receive, mama. Because Jesus. You know, when we see, we see small, small. Kanyane, kanyane. So, I think you know I don't like prophesying, right? But it just comes by the grace of God. Amen. Yeah. Number one, the Lord. Come here. Come. One, the Lord is going to give you stability. The Lord says after 21 days from today. I receive. He will give you a sign I in receive. your relationship. I receive. After how many days? After 21 days. He's going to give you a sign if this guy is the real guy or a fake one. I receive. That's your instruction. 21 days from today. I receive, Mama. And if God shows you that this person is a wrong person, just pack your bags and go. Do not hold on to something that is dead. I receive. But if the Lord shows you that this is the one, then we are ready to come and dance on your wedding day. I receive, Mama. I receive. I receive. At your workplace, there will be divine favor that is coming upon you. I receive. I'm seeing you reaching your target and even passing the target. I receive, I receive. I've been struggling, mama. I receive. Hey, I 
I know you've been struggling, but the Lord will do it for you. And I even saw I a new car coming to you. I receive. I receive. Receive your own car in the name of Jesus. I receive. If you are believing God for a new car, may God deliver you. I receive you a car it. In the mighty name of Jesus. I receive. I pray for everybody who is following us on Facebook. I decree and I declare over your life. I receive. The same way God is releasing grace for new cars, new homes, new financial breakthroughs. May you be a partaker in Jesus' I name. I receive. The Lord will do new things in your life. I receive, Mama. It's my desire that the Lord must take you very close to me than never before. I receive, Mama. The Lord says, I must pray for you. I must pick you by your hand. I receive. And the Lord says, I must mother you. I receive. I just lost my mom. The Lord says I must mother her. I must take her as my own. Wow. I don't know why, but the Lord is going to do great things through your life. I receive. I receive. Thank you, Lord. There will be people from your mother's family who come and claim something to do with them. This is this a farm? Is this an estate? Is it a what? It's an estate, Mama. There will be people who come and claim this thing. This I'm seeing like an estate or a farm already, or something. They're already coming. They're and claiming. busy claiming. It, they don't want you to get any percentage at the end of the day. But the angel who fights our I battles. Receive. Receive. I invoke on angel Michael tonight. I May he fight your battles in the name of I Jesus. Receive. I decree and I declare tonight. I receive. Let the God of prophet Didi Isaac. I receive. Let the God that I say. I receive. May he visit your family I in receive. Jesus name. I receive. Go. The Lord will do it for you. Pow. You know, my Thank church is Jesus. no longer here, Thank so you. they are very dull. Oh. These, ones. These ones are so boring. They just want me to talk, talk, and go home. My church is not here. If my church was here, they were going to make noise than that. Pow. Yo. Hallelujah. Can we get back to the reading of the word of the Lord? I was just interrupted. Amen. But I thank the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who needs a prophecy? Look at you. Look at you. You love prophecy. Let me preach aside to you. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I thank God tonight for giving me this privilege to be ministering his words to his people. I don't take it for granted, but it's an election by grace. And I thank God for the prophet of this house for entrusting me with his anointing and his altar. Amen. And I believe God will do something great in your life. Amen. I said amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Hmm. Jesus. Now, the word of the Lord says in the book of Genesis, and after these things, the word of the Lord came. Now, listen, after which things? This scripture, it starts after these things. We have not read about these things. Which things? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, let's quickly get to the book of Genesis chapter number 14. We're going to read from verse 18 to 24. Are we there? The Bible says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the high priest of God, most high. 
And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. Tonight the Lord will deliver your enemies into your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. And he gave him a tithe of all. Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I would take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap. And that I will not take anything that is yours. Lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich. Huh? Did you hear that? Now the king of Sodom wanted him to, he wanted to give um, Abraham some goods. Amen? And Abraham refused. He said, do not give me anything. Because tomorrow you might come and boast to say, you are the one who made me rich. Hallelujah. Imagine if it were you as broke as you are, were you going to, put, to refuse some money? Were you going to refuse some finances? Were you going to refuse that financial breakthrough? If it came on a day like this one, the same way you are broke today. And then somebody comes and offers you one million rands or two million rands and he says, I want you to sell me such a pace and I'm going to give you such kind of money. Are you going to refuse that? Are you going to refuse that? You can't. Hallelujah. And now, the Bible says, lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich. Except only that the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me. Anna, Eshko, and Mamre. Let them take their portion. Hallelujah. Hmm. Abraham said, except only if these young men can eat and have their portion for me. I am okay. Amen? As for me, I am what? Why did Abraham refuse to get that offer from the king of Sodom? It's simply because he knew to say his help neither comes from the east, west, south, or north, but his help comes from the Lord. Hence, he says, lest you should boast that you made Abraham rich. Hallelujah. You know, there are a lot of people who have helped us before, who have helped you before. They are now boasting to say they're the ones who made your life to be the way it is. But is that true? But is that true? Our help does not come from the east, west, or south. It comes from the Lord himself. And the word of the Lord says, God says, I shall raise stones to worship me if I find none among you. So in other words, God can use anything and he can use anybody to do anything in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. Now I am interested in the part where the Bible says that now the priest... Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Melchizedek was the high priest. Amen. And he was a king of Salem. The word Salem comes from a word Jerusalem. Jerusalem means land of peace. So Abraham comes from the confusion of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he meets a man who is a high priest who comes from the land of peace. So in other words, every time you are in the midst of confusion, it's every moment and every time the Lord will send a helper. It's every time the Lord will send a destiny connector that will push you into your right destiny, that will push you into a place of no confusions, that will put you in a place where there is peace and liberty. Hallelujah. And God Almighty will always assign a man 
to push you in your right destiny. And it is my prayer tonight that God will send the right person to push you in your right destiny in the name of Jesus. It is my prayer tonight that God must disconnect you from every wrong and fake person around you in the name of Jesus. And the Bible records to say, and this king of Salem, he blessed him. He blessed who? Abraham. He blessed him. After he blessed him, you know, the Bible says, Abraham gave the tenth of everything that he had. He gave his tithe unto Melchizedek. He gave his tenth unto the high priest. Hallelujah. Now that means that every time you give your tithe in the house of the Lord, every time you bring the tithe in the house of the Lord, you are guaranteed for a particular blessing. You are guaranteed for a certain covenant that the Lord makes with you. Hmm, I wish I had my church here. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We have so many people who have given tithe faithfully in the house of the Lord. Right? And yet they're still saying, I've not been blessed yet. It's like the more I give my tithe, is the more I'm getting broke. The question is, ask your neighbor, have you really given faithfully? Ask your neighbor, do you really give faithfully? Listen. Many people, they question God. They say, God, I'm still in poverty. I don't know how to come out of this poverty. One of the easiest ways for you to come out of the spirit of poverty or for you to get rid of the spirit of poverty is by you giving your tithes and your offerings and your seed in the house of the Lord. It's not just by laying of hands. It's not just by praying and fasting. But there's so many procedures. There's so many means that you can use to provoke the anointing of God and the anointing of God to work for you. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says after he gave his tithe the high priest blessed him. He blessed him. And I love it. In the book of uh, Genesis 15 the Bible says and after these things the word of the Lord came to Abraham. After what? After he refused the wealth that was going to come by the name of a man. He refused the riches that were going to come via the hand of the king of Sodom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, he refused wealth that was going to have blemish over his life. He didn't want to have any dirty wealth on his head. He wanted to get rich by the help of the holy God, the holy hand of the Lord himself. And the Bible says, and after these things, the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid. Abraham, I am your shield. And the Lord is saying to you tonight, he is your shield. I said the word of the Lord says, he is your shield. Hey. And the Lord told Abraham, says, I am your exceeding great reward. In other words, the reward that was going to come by the king of Sodom cannot be compared. It was going not to exceed this kind of reward. Hallelujah. Are you expecting a reward from the Lord? Are you expecting a reward from the Lord? In the book of Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 6, the Bible says, God is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. Ask your neighbor, are you a diligent seeker of the Lord? Are you a faithful seeker of the Lord? Many people, they seek rewards from the Lord when they're not diligent when it comes to the things of God. You want God to give you a job. What have you done in the house of the Lord? You only come on Sunday. You only come on midweek service. There is no service that you render unto him apart from you just being on that chair. You don't even know who came and cleaned that chair. You don't even know who came and arranged that chair where you're sitting on. And you don't do nothing in the house of the Lord. 
You can't give, you can't offer your service. You can't give God your hands. You can't give God your energy. You can't give God your money. You can't God give God anything apart from your heart. The only thing, oh, I give you my, oh, I give you my soul. That's all. It ends there, right? Ask your neighbor, what have you ever given in the house of the Lord? And ask your neighbor, are you tired of your poverty? Are you tired of your stagnation? Have you ever wondered why things are not moving? Have you ever moved anything for the Lord? Have you ever pushed or packaged anything for the Lord? Not even pushing a chair, not even packaging it for him. And you expect God to package a big miracle for you. Nothing comes for free. You have to do something for him in order for him to release something. And the Bible says, after he gave his tithes, after all these things, that is when now the Lord appeared to Abraham. And I'm more interested in the book of, um, in the same uh, chapter number 15, where the Lord says, then he brought him outside and said, look now towards heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them, and he said to him, so ya shall be your descendants. And how can God be talking to Abraham who is, a, who is childless, he's having this childlessness in him. They got no child, they don't have any child of their own. And God still says, I'm going to give you your descendants who are going to be greater than the stars. That you're able to see with your own eyes. In other words, God was telling Abraham of the impossibility. Amen. He was telling him of the what? He was telling him of the impossibility. And I love what the word of the Lord says in, uh, in, um, in verse 18 of the same scripture, Genesis chapter number 15. The Bible says, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, to your descendants, I have given this land. To his descendants. To his heir. To his children. You are also a seed of Abraham. I said you are a seed of Abraham. You are a descendant of Abraham. And it is the will and the desire of God for him to grant you the land that he has prepared for you. You are not a beggar. I said you are not a what? 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 Jesus. the Lord was speaking to him. He said, I've given you all these rivers. All the great rivers. In other words, every place where there's a sign of wealth, I have given it to you. Every land where there's a sign of greatness, I have given it to you. So imagine, it was as a result of his giving his tenth. That even today, I am also an inheritor of this blessing of his tithing. It was because of his giving that God had to make that covenant with Abraham. It was because of that 10%. That is why when pastors or teachers or prophets, they tell you to give in the house of the Lord. It's not because they just want you to give. There is a power, there is a covenant that God has given according to the tithe that you give in the house of the Lord. Hmm. Jesus. Ask your neighbor, do you want to run out of poverty? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. God has to be acknowledged that he is the source of everything that you desire. How do you acknowledge God? 
You acknowledge him with your seed and offerings. You acknowledge him with your, with your praise and worship. You acknowledge him in your prayer. You acknowledge him in your daily lives. You can do anything just to acknowledge him that he is. The more you acknowledge God that he is, is the more he shows up to show off that he is. Because he's not a God that he should lie, nor a, man, a son of man that he needs repentance. He's not a man that he should lie. He's a God of his words. He's a God of his promises. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And I want to believe that even when the day that Abraham was giving his tithes on the altar of Melchizedek, I want to believe that he did not just think about himself. He was thinking about his generations to come. He didn't want his generations to go through what he had gone through. To go through the things that he had gone through. The pain that he had gone through. The childlessness that he went through. He didn't want his generations that were going to come forth after his generation to come and suffer. To come and go through the pain that he went through. So in other words, it is the plan, it is the plan and the will of God for you to think generational, for you to think about the generations that are coming ahead of you. Remember, if you are cursed, it's all, not only you that is being cursed, even the generations that are coming after you, they're the ones that are to be affected at the end of the day. Today, some of us, we are suffering because our parents never gave tithe. We are struggling to be tithers in the house of the Lord because our forefathers never gave tithe in the house of the Lord. And it's like now it has moved as a generational case. We can't give in the house of the Lord. We can't do the things of God with a willing heart. We do them by being pushed by other people. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You cannot harvest where you have never planted. You can't harvest where you have never planted. And the level of your seed will determine the level of your harvest. One seed is equal to one cove of maize. And you know the principle of sowing is very cardinal in every believer. Hallelujah. I'm not just talking about sowing seeds. Even the seeds that you sow in your daily life. How you treat people around you. How you live a life. How you treat believers around you. How you live a life. How do you, what kind of seed do you plant in your neighbor's life? Ask your neighbor, what kind of seed have you planted for your generations to come? You are wondering why today you can't stop drinking. There was somebody who had a seed of drinking. Maybe your mother or your father was a drunkard. Or your grandfather was a drunkard. You can't run away from it. You are wondering why you can't run away from fornication and adultery. Somebody ahead of you should have done something ahead of you. And remember when you plant one seed, you, it will germinate. It will grow. One seed is equal to one cob. One cob is equal to whatsoever. So it means your descendants will do greater than what you have done. So it's a matter of you and I questioning ourselves. What kind of seeds are we planting in the vineyard of God? What kind of seeds are we planting in our family? What kind of seeds are we planting towards our children that are coming ahead of us? Are we planting a seed of lies? Are we planting a seed of accusations? Are we planting a seed of whatsoever and whatsoever? Ask your neighbor, what kind of a seed have you planted? You don't expect to reap guava when you have planted mango. Uh oh. And there's a saying that says, what goes around comes around. That's very true. And when it comes around, it's going to hit you even times two or times three. Am I talking to Holy Ghost Embassy? Am I talking to Holy Ghost Embassy? You know, me, I don't preach to entice people. I don't do that. I'll tell you the truth. Because the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It is the truth that sets people free. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you're listening in Jesus' name. I said may the Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I said, may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I pray that every good seed that you have ever planted in your life, may the Lord turn it into a higher dimension in Jesus' name. May he multiply it in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen. 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 God wants us to check the kind of life that we are living. And he wants us to check what kind of seed are we planting. Amen. 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 I said amen. I said amen. Hmm. It is my prayer that God will give you divine protection. The Lord told Abraham, he said, I am your what? Your shield. That means that God is our protection. God is our judge. Amen. Some people have fallen into strange traps. They have fallen into strange things because they never knew that that was a trap. Amen. Some of you, you have lost divine relationships. You have lost divine projects, divine things that God placed in your hands. You have lost them because of a simple bad seed that came around your life. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hmm. How many people wants to prosper tonight? It is my prayer that God will prosper you in Jesus' name. It is my prayer that the Lord will prosper you in the name of Jesus. That poverty is evaporating from your life in the name of Jesus. That stagnation and frustration is evaporated from your life in the name of Jesus. Hmm. People say, money is evil. Money is not evil. But the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil. Money answers all things. That's what the Bible says. And everybody needs money. Right? 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 I know tonight everybody wants financial breakthrough. Even if I tell you write your prayer request now, almost everybody, number one, financial breakthrough. <laughs> or financial stability. Hallelujah. I pray that your seed shall multiply in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare divine God's protection over your finances in the name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Praise the name of Jesus. So, if you want poverty, you want to move from poverty to wealth, you need to understand a few principles. Amen? One of the principles is what I've already told you. Tithing. Offerings. Seeds. Amen? And consistency. Consistency is one of the things that will cause you to reap or to harvest bountifully. You don't give today and stop tomorrow. Amen? Give until God releases what is in his hands. Don't get tired. I know it's very tiresome. It's one of the things that nobody can do it frequently. But do it until God releases what is in his hands. The fact that he has not released what is in his hands. It simply means that you have not yet released what is in your hands. He cannot place anything in your hands because your hands are full. Oh yeah. He can only release something in the hands that are empty. Ask your neighbor, have you released your all?
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Tithe, it simply makes you to realize that God is first in your dealings. Tithe simply makes you to realize that God is first in your dealings. God is not the next option, but he's always the first option and is a priority. So before you pay your water bills, before you pay your electrical bills, before you pay your renters, tithe is a priority. Hallelujah. I know people hate that, but that's the truth. And that's the only way I can help you to financial freedom. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now I want you to understand that tithe, it provokes a divine blessing of the Lord. It does what? It provokes a divine blessing of the Lord. And I want you to know that every new level in life, it brings new devils. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I think this is not as loud as that one was. Can you increase the volume on this one? I appreciate it. Hallelujah. Tithes, they provoke a divine blessing of God. Now, a divine blessing, it's a blessing that comes upon you with a divine reward. I hope you have written that one down. Hallelujah. And there's another point that I want you to understand is that there are some blessings that are very quick and easy to get, but they are not divine blessings. Some people want fast forward miracles, microwave miracle. A microwave baked cake cannot be compared with an oven baked cake. Microwave miracles, they're easy to get but not too delicious to enjoy. Hmm. Am I talking to somebody? Shake your neighbor, tell them, do you need a microwave one or an oven one? <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So some blessings are very quick and easy to get, but they ain't divine. They're not divine blessings. And most believers today, they seek such blessings. They want to be on top in one day. They want God to take them from now. There's always a story to tell. Them to, the Bible says we must work out our miracles. It's not God's responsibility for him to work out my miracle. It is my own responsibility to cultivate and work out something that I want God to materialize at the end of the day. Am I talking to my church? Am I talking to Prophet Didi's church? Hey, am I talking to Prophet Didi's children here? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. If it is not from God, then you don't need it. If it is not from the hand of the Lord, then you don't need it. That is why Abraham said, lest you boast that you have made me rich. I don't need your riches. I don't need your wealth. I need that which comes from the Lord because it is not you who maketh rich. My health doesn't come from the east, west, southern, north. It comes from the Lord. I am not blessed by a human being. I am the blessed of the Lord. It is the Lord himself who blesses me. It is God himself who assigns people to come and bless me. If it is not from God, then don't take it. In other words, it takes courage and commitment for God to release the blessing. It takes courage, commitment, sacrifice, diligence to 
release a blessing from his hands. It doesn't come for free. Are you still busy hanging around with people who are married? Are you still busy hanging around with guys that will not even take you anywhere? What kind of a seed are you sowing for your generation? You hear me? I don't want to talk to pamper you. I'm talking the truth of God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I don't serve a God who respects sin. And I hate sin with a passion. I don't serve a God who pampers sin. You hear me? Huh. I'm not a kind of a person who will come and pamper you because you are from sinning and then I should pamper you, I should do whatsoever. I don't do such kind of nonsense. That's stupidity at its peak and it's like I'm taking you, I'm leading you to your own hell. My priority mandate and God called me simply to help you not to go to hell but to take you to heaven. Simple. Now listen. Hey. How many people need a blessing from God tonight? Do you need a blessing? Do you need a blessing? Am I being too harsh on you? Am I being too hard on you? It's okay. I'll still remain to be your mother. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay. Hate me only on this session and then afterwards you can laugh with me and hug me and love me. It's okay. But I want to tell you the truth. Right? I won't tell you that this fire, I won't let you to hold, to touch fire when I know that fire burns. Unless if I am very wicked, wicked than the devil himself. Jesus. Are we getting somewhere? Are we getting somewhere? Are we getting somewhere? Shake your neighbor, tell them if it's not from God then I don't need it. If it's not having the backing of God, if it's not having the support of God, then I don't need it in my life. Any relationship that does not have any backing from God, you must back out of that relationship. Any marriage that has no backing from God, then it has nothing to do with God. You better let it go and let God begin to release things that are in your hand, in his hand. You are holding on to dead babies. Let it go. And let God release something new for you. And guess what? You are not an ordinary person. You are an extraordinary human being who deserves extraordinary miracles, extraordinary testimonies. I don't need any kind of a miracle. I need an extraordinary miracle. You know why? I save an extraordinary God. You save a divine God. You save an extraordinary God. Why should you settle for less? Why must you settle for less? Why must you settle for things that will not even benefit your children in future? My God. Am I talking to somebody here? I said, am I talking to somebody here? Mm. Don't seek. Don't look. Or don't seek. For just, don't just. I decree that God gives you a divine blessing. I said, I decree that God gives you a divine blessing. Shake your neighbor. Say neighbor. There is no limit to what God has for me. Say I am unlimited. Say I am unstoppable. Say I am unshakable. Listen. What happens is this. What happens is this. Right? When you are a child of God, right? And when you begin to malfunction, right? What do I mean? When you begin to live in sin. And when such messages are being preached, right? You think they are talking about you. 
People who take this thing too personal, and yet I'm not talking about them, I'm talking about the reality about what God is saying. You understand what I mean? Because God is a reality God, a real God who wants to bless somebody who is ready for God's blessing. You might think I am talking about you, and yet there's somebody who is being bailed. You hear me? Are you getting me? Are you getting me? I don't know, sometimes my messages, they come at a time when you want me to say something else and he's saying something different that will hate you at the end of the day. But I don't mean to hate you. I don't know if I have to apologize, but I don't owe anybody an apology. Unless if it's God himself has to come and apologize to you. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of Jesus. I said praise the name of Jesus. Guess what? You have no limits in your life. Say, I got no limit. Say, I am unlimited. Do you believe you are unlimited? Do you believe you are unstoppable? Do you believe that nobody can shake you? Hmm. Can I talk to somebody? Can I talk to somebody? Remember today, I'm just chatting with you, right? Uh, we're talking tonight. And I believe at the end of this talk, your life will be changed and will be transformed. In Jesus' mighty name. I said in Jesus' mighty name. Hey. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, obedience opens up the heavens. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And the Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. <laughs> huh? The Bible says what? Children, obey your parents in the Lord. So that your days may be longer. So it's a matter of obedience. Listen, obedience, you don't just obey anyhow. You need to have a heart of sacrifice in order for you to obey a voice. As I'm speaking here, not everybody is obeying my voice. It might be one out of ten or two out of hundred that are obeying this voice. You hear me? Huh? Huh? Jesus. You want me to say, the Lord bless you? The Lord bless you. You can't receive a blessing without you provoking the hand that blesses. You don't receive blessings for free. You don't receive blessings because you think you're special from God. Amen. I said amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Hmm. Abraham had the mentality of God. He didn't think about himself only, but he thought about generations to come. Now ask your neighbor, what kind of a mentality do you have? Do you just think about you buying that Lamborghini and then it ends there? Do you just think about you just building that five-bedroom house and then it ends there? Every good parent, they leave an inheritance for their children. Every good parent, they leave an inheritance for their children. Ask your neighbor, what kind of an inheritance have you built for your children? You might have no child now, but God is still going to give you children in future. It is the seed that you're planting now, even at your tender age, that God is still going to look at in order for you to reap in the future. Hey. 
Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Mm. Can I give you this statement? And I want you to write it down. What you do opens up the heavens and not what you just say. What you do opens up the heavens. Not just what you just say. I know there's power in confession. But it's not just about confession. And guess what? I have words. The Bible says, the battle belongs to the Lord. So if only you are faithful to this, the Lord, this God, if only you are true, you know in reality that you don't owe God anything. You have done the best that you can to please him. So it doesn't matter who appreciates you, who acknowledges you or not. But what matters is the acknowledgement that comes from God himself. In trying to justify yourself, you may end up sinning against the Lord. In trying to make people understand that you said this or you never said this or whatsoever. In trying to make people who don't believe in you to believe in you. You may end up finishing your time, your energy, you lose your weight, you have sleepless nights. Hey, it's a big job to do. It is too much on you. You know you have stress. Your back, you'll be feeling like you're carrying the whole hundred cages. Load on your back. Hallelujah. Don't try to build castles that are not meant for you to build. You build in the air. You build in vain. <laughs> Allow God to build your life and your destiny. Don't try and justify yourself. My pastor, you say, no, I didn't say this. Or I didn't do this. The fact that they are saying you did it is not a real. Facts are not truth. It's a fact that they have said about you, but is that the truth? Is it a fact that sets you free or the truth? So why must I dwell on the facts and not dwell on the truth? Hmm. My God. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Shake yourself. Say I am moving from poverty to wealth. Say I am moving from riches to wealth. Say poverty is not my portion anymore. Shake your neighbor. Say failure is not my portion anymore. Say I am the blessed of the Lord. The blessed of the Lord. I am the lifted of the Lord. I am the sanctified of the Lord. Jesus. Yes, my boss. I receive. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. If you don't like this, go and hang on a tomato tree now. Tell them that Evangelist Hope will sponsor your funeral. Yeah, I'll do that. Hallelujah. Are you not going to be my partner? <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Don't dwell in the presence of people that don't appreciate you. You try to do the best you can. With the abilities of God. You're not able on your own. But God is the one who gives you the ability. And if they cannot see the ability of God. Let it go. Amen. If you have failed them. It means you have failed God. They have, God has failed them. So. I'm just helping you tonight. So that you don't dwell on dead things dwell on dead things. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to give you a financial breakthrough. Stand up now. 
interested in fixing you. <laughs> Thou art welcome me this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome me this place Holy Spirit Thou art welcome me this place Omnipotent Father Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace Thou art welcome in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We bless your name, Lord. Amen. We honor you tonight. Amen. Thank you for speaking to us. Amen. Thank you for rebuking and building us. Amen. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, because you are in this place. Amen. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome me this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in Go and help me sing for them. Omni. From their time, from their time of frustration, their moments of frustration, I pray and I decree and I declare that let God. Potent Father. Of mercy and grace, this place. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands. Listen. We are in the moment where I want to allow the Holy Spirit to touch somebody tonight. I might not touch you. You can see a lot of people are being touched by the Holy Ghost himself. I would rather be touched by the Holy Ghost by the, than being touched by a human being. Thank you, Jesus. He touched me. He touched 
not look unto how many mistakes you have made. And the word is messes on you every morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He's here to rescue you. He's here to save you. Amen. He's here to preserve you. Amen. I pray that may you never fall in the trap of the enemy. I receive. May you never fall, fall in any trap of the enemy. I receive. Whatsoever trap that the enemy has set for you, it will not be for you. I receive. In the mighty. It will not be for you. I receive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.
that says shalom, shalom. Thank you for joining us and thank you for watching us. The Lord bless you and the Lord be your defender in Jesus' mighty name. Shalom, shalom. Thank you.